<laughs> was that your knee? Yeah, mm. uh, ankle actually. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Twitter. Very nice to have you here. Hi. Hi. Um, hello. Hi. Here we are, live at Twitter HQ. You can follow us on hashtag Twitter Talks. I'm Harriet, and I am here with the stunningly talented stars of Venus in Fur, Natalie Dormer and David Oakes. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Very well. Very well. Very happy Good. to be called stunningly talented. Thank oh, you very much. It's Was true. that just it's you true. or is that both of us? Can I That's to be determined. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I have to say, I did, I did see the show on the weekend. Oh, um, great. I did, and uh, I, I can't stop thinking about it. Good. It's so rich, it's so complex. It's so funny. It's so funny. Thank you. Yeah, that's um, hard. That's the biggest thing to communicate. It, how really, funny it, it is. really is. It's really funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and the chemistry between you guys is, is just electric. Like it was just, it was such a stunning evening. So thank you for such an amazing evening. Thank you for the coming. Come again. Total pleasure. Um, let's get straight into. Get, let's get straight into it. Tell us a little bit about the show in your own words, if you can. <laughs> uh, there's a guy called Thomas Novacek who is in New York trying to cast his play, which is based on a book that was written in 1870 by Leopold Versacker Massoc called Venus in Fur, mm -hmm. which is where we get masochism from, is Leopold Versacker Massoc. So he's written this. Um, Adapt, adaptation of his of this book and he's trying to cast the play and he's seen a load of terrible actresses and then in walks Van der Jordan who appears to be the epitome of everything he has hated and disgusted from from the women he's auditioned that day right. and lo and behold she reveals that she is a diamond in the rough she <laughs> is perfect she is perfection she is strong powerful vengeful delightful hilarious and then hilarity and terror ensues. <laughs> There's like um, adversarial gender politics, sexual attraction, combative kind of fun, basically. Because as you said, it's very funny. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, you know, and then and it, it all flips. gets very surreal in the last 20 minutes. Yeah, no spoilers, but. No spoilers. But it's bro. Um, right, let's get straight into Twitter questions then. Um, you can uh, ask, ask your questions via Twitter while we're talking. We'll try and get those, uh, we'll try and get as many as we can in for you. So I'm going to go first with a question from a Mr. David Oakes, who has a question for Natalie. And he says, if you had to choose a favourite in the cast, who would it be? <laughs> You did. It's a very good it's question. It's a really good question. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> My did. favourite in the cast um, would obviously be the fictional cat. Yeah. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah, it's damning. Not <laughs> only have you chosen an entity that is not in the play, but is, is even a fictional. It's not even human. Gosh. Oh, we know. We all know that we answer that to the question. <laughs> we do. We do. Um, Hannah asks. So um, cool. I can't believe you typed that. You're such a. <laughs> He did. The joy of social media. Yeah, you can follow David on Twitter. Um, <laughs> David underscore Oaks. Yeah. Um, Hannah asks um, a, a brilliant question. What do you think happened after the play ended? Uh, everyone goes to the bar and has a glass of Prosecco. And uh, <laughs> if they're not there with a sexy partner, they find one. It's basically like speed dating. Okay. <laughs> There we go, Hannah. Is that Hannah? <laughs> Hannah, we can't ask that question. It will give spoilers to spoiler. people who haven't seen the, the play. The play is deliberately a little ambiguous. So it ambivalent. is <laughs> ambivalent. Uh, it is open to interpretation. Yeah. So you that can is. make of it what you will. It is. My when you mother... make a really important point, are you going to do it in an American accent? Yeah, I think I might now. <laughs> Anything that I actually mean, I will be saying in an alternate accent. <laughs> Um, that's basically the There's play, lots though. of accents in the play. Yeah. There are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, my mum thought it was all a dream. That's what she thought. Oh, okay. I think, to, I think that, she's wrong. Isn't that, Sorry, that's mom. a cop out, isn't it? Isn't it a cop out to say it's all a dream? Giving a go at my mum. Moving on. Awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, Fiona, I'm not having a go at Fiona. I'm definitely not. Um, Lils asks What was your first reaction when you first read the script? Uh, I, I, I thought I was going to read like the first five pages and then go to a lunch. I had a lunch to go to and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be late for lunch. And I read the whole thing in oh, one sitting. Oh, that's amazing. Where was the lunch? None of your business. Okay. She didn't go. <laughs> she was late. <laughs> um, I was on a train and I thought the end was mad. And I had to read it again straight away. And then I thought it was brilliant. So yeah, I had to reread read yeah. the end as well. I think, it, I think it's... To, a, to check. <laughs> did, I, did, did, I, did I miss well, what? Uh, it's the only uh, play I think gets, that gets better on a second viewing. I think it's, it's multi-layer. It's brilliant. Amazing. Um, play twice. You've got to come again, that means now. I'm booked. I'm in. Um, Lewis asks, as it's just the two of you on stage, what do you think oh, is the most important quali quality of your co-actor to Generosity. have? Generosity. Brush your teeth. <laughs> 
Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> um, Duncan asks, what's your biggest piece of advice to young actors who want to go into the industry? Brush your teeth, apparently. Mm. We, I literally got taught that at drama school. Like, we did a course at drama school on like, just general sort of performance. Hygiene. Etiquette. Yeah, and they said, brush your teeth, have <laughs> a mint. Like, it's pretty good advice, really. No, come audition. on, let's give him a proper answer. Yeah. What's, the, what's the question, <laughs> what's the question, question again? What's, what's your one key piece of advice you'd give to young actors who are starting out in the industry? I, I think drama school. I really do. I think to take two, three, or one year, take some years out to actually get the craft down, yeah. um, to be able to practice and fail within a safe environment is yeah. a very good way to start. See a lot of stuff, become a yeah. cinephile, go to the cinema a lot, go to the theatre a lot, submerge, yeah. read scripts, submerge yourself in storytelling. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant advice. Um, if you're just, just joining us, we're here at Twitter HQ, live with Twitter Talks with the amazing David and Natalie from Venus in Fur, taking your questions live on Twitter. Um, and Elizabeth has just asked, what's the most challenging thing about performing on stage versus performing on camera? Uh, well, you're on your own. If you mess up, you have to save yourself. Or sometimes <laughs> yeah. if you're lucky, your co-star will save you. But there is no cut. Only if you brush your teeth. Only if you brush your teeth. <laughs> which I do, by the way. I feel this is very important to stress that I do brush my teeth before I go on stage. Um, yeah, it, there's no cut. There's no safety net. Yeah. So if you're on stage and you mess up or you drop a line or you've got to get yourself out of it or maybe sometimes you're helped... But, so it's like flying by the seat of your pants, the adrenaline and keeping yourself mm. walking the wire. Also you have to look okay. after yourself in just in general. Like our voices and our general sense of well-being is something that you need to look after in a way that you don't necessarily have to do in quite the same way. It's a cardiovascular exercise. Yeah, mm. we kind of like, we. It's like, a, it's like a workout every night, isn't it? It's, yeah. We've, yeah. I guess that's, that goes back to the training thing as well of go and get yourself fit and yeah. get yourself yeah, prepared. Yeah. You have to be fit to do it. Yeah. You have to be fit. Um, Francesca's just tweeted a lovely compliment. She says, you're both so endearing to your fans and so generous and lovely with your time. Thank you for showing us how it's done. Aww, it's nice, easy to it? be so nice to our fans when our fans are so nice. Oh, look at that. <laughs> love fest. Look at that. Hashtag love fest. <laughs> Hashtag brushy teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michaela asks, asks, if you could choose a profession other than acting... What would it be? There is no plan B. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'd be, I'd be a yoga slash um, scuba diver instructor mm. and go and live somewhere Great really choice. nice. Yeah. And I'd scuba dive in the morning and teach scuba dive and then in the afternoons I would teach a yoga class and then I'd have a glass of wine. Oh, can I come? And then I'd start sounds the day amazing. all over again. That sounds amazing. I'd like to be a <laughs> zoologist slash astronaut. Brilliant. Brilliant. There's, there's, you know there's going to be a problem there, right? <laughs> there might be animals in space. Okay. Go and find them for us. Yeah. Go and find them for I us. I mean, like, we sent, there was Laika, the dog, who we froze didn't, to death Didn't in. come, yeah. No. Ellie says... Stop what? talking, Oh, <laughs> Stop talking. Ellie so, says, so Laika would have needed a vet. I could be Laika's personal You didn't say that. You didn't say you wanted to be a vet. You said you wanted to be a zoologist. There's a difference. Oh, Don't go insulting zoologists <laughs> and veterinarian surgeons. There's a difference between those professions. She's right, you know. Michaela, you've caused chaos. Um, <laughs> um, Ellie says, what traits, if any, do you share with your characters? <laughs> um, I, c I can say something, but it would be a spoiler, so I won't. Okay. Uh, can you say anything's not a spoiler? Um, I think Vanda is adorable. Oh, and what do we think about I Thomas? think Thomas is a prig. Right. <laughs> <laughs> prig with a G, <laughs> not a CK. Didn't say, didn't say CK. Prig, G, G, G. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Tony asks, what do you think uh, audiences enjoy most about the play? Mm, I, I don't think there's any one thing. I think that we are blessed with a particularly young demographic. We have had lots of people coming who have been surprised by the feminist message and have yes. come out feeling empowered in a current climate where people aren't quite sure what empowerment really means right now because there's so much that's sort of odd about the current sexualization of industry and politics. David and I were a little bit sad that some people misinterpreted the play and didn't think it was feminist. We think it's a very feminist text. And empowering. And that's, empowering. It's, that's the thing. And that's why we both said yes to it. Right. So for the few people that did misinterpret it, we think they kind of missed the point of the play. Yeah. yeah. Right? Come back and watch it again and then see if you still think it. Like it's, yeah. 
It's pertinent and it is powerful and it will hopefully spur a younger generation to be better than the previous generation. Yeah, excellent answer, brilliant question, thank you. Um, Nikki asks, who's been your biggest inspiration acting wise? Who've been your big role models? Oh, it shifts and changes. It, um, Betty Davis, Catherine Hepburn. Gregory Henry. Peck. Amazing. There you go. Good one. Brilliant ones there. One. Well, there, yeah. I mean, it does. It it, it, it comes and goes. Jimmy Cont Stewart. Contemporary wise, it comes and goes. But yeah, yeah, those sure. are the old faithfuls, right? Yeah. Yeah. Old school. Like, well, interestingly enough, not as an actor, but the I remember seeing Patrick Marber's play Dealer's Choice when I was much younger, yeah, and yeah. that was a play that got me dynamically interested in theatre. Yeah. So subsequently, to be working with him on this yeah. is. Not just to be influenced, but then to collaborate with is is a joy. Dealer's, oh, that's amazing. Dealer's choice yeah. closer. Yeah. Patrick is yeah. an absolute gem and yeah. such a talented human being. It's an honour to be working with him again. Yeah. Patrick uh, directed the play. For those of you who don't know, brilliantly, stunningly. Um, Fenny says you're both incredible, and I haven't even seen the play yet, but you're both so likable. Also, Benny says, did you name the fox that came into the theatre? <laughs> yeah, did you? I mean, there a fox that? incident? Did you name no, that? So I, I was. I was the last person in the building on Saturday evening after the two shows and a fox ran in through the stage door and Aww. I spent about four minutes chasing it around the theatre. And you posted that, <laughs> didn't you? Was yeah. it on your Instagram was, or on your Twitter? We have to say it's on Twitter because we're in... It's Twitter, it's definitely Twitter. Sorry guys, <laughs> bad marks uh, for Natalie. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, we didn't. I, I didn't, didn't know where you it. posted it. I didn't know where you put it. Um, let's name it. Like, tweet yeah. in. Give us. Yeah, give, name the fox, guys. Name the fox. Name the, next time the it breaks fox. In. I, I have two foxes that come to my garden regularly, and I called them Big Fox and Little Fox. So that's let's get better names than that, then. Yeah. <laughs> that's how imaginative you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> name the um, fox. Brilliant. Um, Gloria says, both of you, what's the best prank you've ever played on each other? And then she says, love you both. Pranks. Yeah, what's the best prank you've ever played each on each other? I haven't told you what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> um, we, we haven't really. We yet. haven't really, have we? Um, no, we okay. like each other too much, I think, at okay. the moment. <laughs> at, the mo at, at the moment, conditional. There, yeah. I, think, I think, although we haven't played pranks on each other, there is a playfulness on stage. There have been times when I have enjoyably watched you corpse and hide underneath the blanket in a certain <laughs> scene. There was one night on stage when I was corpsing, which is, if people who don't know his terminology for means I start laughing uncontrollably and can't stop myself. Sure. Awkward and on stage. It was great. On, and the only thing I could do to quiet. not make eye contact with him was to throw a blanket over <laughs> my head, try to recover myself for about six seconds. It felt like an eternity. It felt like a lot longer. <laughs> maybe someone was in. Maybe someone was in that night li listening to us. Now it was hilarious. <laughs> I would worry that if we started doing pranks on each other, they would. It would start. get out of control very quickly. Yeah, it would. Yeah, because we're both. We both like to win. <laughs> Right. Don't know what he's Which a lot of the plays about anyway, so yeah. you probably want to be <laughs> yeah. probably want to be concentrating there's, on that. In the show, there's a big bag that has lots of props in it that we need at certain points in the show. So if one wanted to screw up the other person, it could it very, would be very, could very easy very to easily. just replace something with yeah. something else, yeah. and you would be fairly stitched up. Yeah. Oh, there's. Oh, I was going to say the knife. I was going to say about the knife kept being. Could you use a real knife. No, not use a real knife. I'm We're just not, saying not the knife. That. The knife was always the wrong. For about a week and a half, the knife was the wrong way round. Every time I went to pick up the knife, so you have the handle against. Because I'm trying to hide the knife when I first pick it up, and I couldn't work out. And stage management and I couldn't work out why the knife was always the wrong way round. That's I'm not exactly like was, true. You <laughs> thought that stage management were doing it poorly, and you didn't realize that I was always just playing with and the stage knife. Stage management were really upset <laughs> because I kept complaining way. about the knife being the wrong round way round. And then we started no, we to realise that David was moving, was like fiddling, like moving it's the knife around. Toys, you know? If there's a weapon on stage, the boys have to play with it, right? Yeah. And so you were just taking it out, playing with it, and putting it back in the wrong way. I didn't know there was a right way. I'm really sorry. <laughs> sorry, tangent. Move on. Me. We've only got time for a couple more questions, so um, that's a shame, but here we do. Um, Izzy asks uh, if you could be any superhero, what would it be? What superpower would you have? They, oh yeah, they're two different questions. Oh okay. Yeah, they are. She says, if you could be any superhero, what would it be, and what would your superpower be? Just and it's complex. She's breaking the rules. It's complex. Two questions. Okay, what would your superpower be? I'd like to be able to speak every single language in the world, including animal. That's a good. You and the animals, right? <laughs> you, <have to laughs> do you can find out Mr. Fox's name. 
I've named him. He's Mr. I Fox. I think it was a girl. Not Mr. Fox. You said it Mrs. was a girl. Fox. Mrs. Fox. She had beautiful. I think it was a girl. Why okay. do you call, why call it Venus? Venus. Venus. Fox. Just call her Venus. Yeah. Okay. He did not like that idea. Well, Venus the fox. <laughs> Venus the vixen. Uh, yeah, Venus the vixen. <laughs> So, See what I did there? Yeah, I did. It was it's very A little clever. bit of alliteration. You should do something that uses words. <laughs> Three as a years career. classical training, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, speak to all the animals and no, speak, <laughs> speak all He can speak to the animals. He's, 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 he's the zoologist in space. He can be Dr. Doolittle in space. <laughs> Producers out there, if anyone wants to produce Dr. Doolittle in space, <laughs> I'm so all he's over it. man. There's been weirder ideas. <laughs> um, I'd like to fly. Yeah. I think it's simple. I think it would be amazing to be able to fly. Or to propel myself in non-land based space. So I'd like to go underwater as well. Can I vote? Propel so. yourself in non-land Through non-land based. Okay. As in not walk. Yeah. Swim. I mean swim. Are you I getting an insight swim. into my world? You are, aren't you? <laughs> Braver woman than I am. It's a little window into my day-to-day existence. That's your job at the moment. <laughs> I'm so alone. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately <Ooh>. not. <laughs> Okay, final question. Um, what's next for the two of you when you finish this show? A holiday. <laughs> Christmas! Christmas! Christmas. Um, for me, it's the Victoria Christmas special. It's on TV, on ITV. Fabulous. That'll be on and you can watch that and there's snow. Fabulous. It's pretty good. But you film Victoria Christmas yeah. special. Yeah. So Is this the one that yeah. you ice skate in? I ice skate like a pro. Okay, I want to see him ice skating in Victoria. And uh, oh, the next time you'll see me is Picnic at Hanging Rock. Um, we'll be out in the spring and um, and also in darkness, which is a movie I made last year. Amazing. Oh, and my movie. I've got a movie too called Cold Skin. Oh, there yeah. you go. We've got lots of things. You loads of things. Loads of things. We're not going anywhere. Oh, hang on a second. More I'm tweets. I'm try and have one more question, I think. Just going to try and fit a little bit more time in. Um, bear with me. Ah, okay. Just to end on. Think about this one from Janet. Thanks, Janet. Hi, Janet. Can you describe each other, think about this, okay. in three words? Stunning, stunningly talented actor. <laughs> Stunning, stunningly talented actor. That was a recall. Did you see what I did there? I, 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 I bookended nice. the interview. All right. I, I don't think, don't let, don't let him give three descriptions. Should we just cut yeah, it out quick? Get, get up. Give me some like the adjectives. <laughs> give me some American like the adjectives. Come like on, come on, David. Let's end on our um. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> don't. You Tonic. dare. <laughs> <laughs> Talented. Okay. Oh, here we go. Kind and supportive. Oh. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch out for the knife this evening when he gets get that point. Thank you, guys. That thank was amazing. It was really much. nice to meet you. The show's on to the 9th of December, it isn't is. it, at the Theatre Royal Haymarket. So thank you so much for being with us. It's been a blast. Thanks for lot. Thank you. Um, thank you all for being with us as well. We've been live at Twitter HQ. The show, as I said, is on till the 9th of December at Theatre Royal Haymarket. You can get your tickets on officiallondontheatre.com and get them, because trust me, if you miss the show, you will regret it. It is amazing. Amazing.